When I'm choosing gouged cane, I want it to have a pale golden color without sunspots, if possible, and I want to make sure that it's not ridgy, which sometimes indicates that it's soft cane. I find that thicker walled tubes produce better cane, um, and I want to make sure that the cane has a flat spot on it so that it will go through the gouger smoothly. Um, and that the cane is 10.5 to 11 millimeters in diameter. So I hold the tube cane up to, against a flat object to see where it lays flattest, and I mark that spot, and then I check to see if it's the correct diameter. For gouged cane, I want the same outer qualities as tube cane, but I'm looking for the inside of the cane to be smooth and shiny, and I avoid cane with little white flecks visible on the inside because that usually means that it's soft and will make a mushy read. Finally, I want my gouged cane to be 58 to 60 micromillimeters thick consistently down the center and the sides to be 45 to 50 micromillimeters thick, so I use the dial indicator to make sure my cane has good measurements. I'm finding the spot where it's flattest, which is about here. It's flush against the 10.75. On the 10.5, there's like a little bit of space there, so I know it's 10.75 instead make little marks on either side of that and then cut with the razor blade so that this is called splitting cane and now this is the portion of that piece that I will actually use to gouge. Let's use this handy dandy rather medieval device called a guillotine chop and that will be my piece of cane that goes into the gouger. Set the Enolity gouger quite wide. Fit the piece of cane in the bed. And have it set to about 60 on my gouger. It's usually about 64 in an actuality. piece of cane is approximately where I want it to be. I'm going to score the middle of the cane on the easel. Then I'm going to fold it in half. Then thinning the very top of this piece of folded cane. Here's my shaver tip. Put it on in the middle. Try to make sure that the um, cane is balanced on both sides and in the middle of the shape. Now I'm going to shape the cane by simply scraping away all the cane that is not protected by the metal shaver tip on both sides. The cane is taken on the shape of my shaper tip. Ears that stick out at the top. You want to get rid of those. So straight up and trim them off. File it. There we go. We're going to stick it onto the tube and we're going to hold it so that it measures 73.5. Now you might be tying on different lengths depending on your tube and on the shape you're using. I'm going to mark so that I don't go beyond that when I'm tying. Because if I do, it will cut off all the vibrations. I'm going to rub the beeswax onto the thread so it makes it sticky. So it and that also helps the reed to seal so that water doesn't leak out between the thread. I'm gonna make sure the reed closes evenly on both sides so that this opening is the same as this opening. So like right now, this is more open than this one. So it means I have to, to move my cane over on the tube until it looks right. I also wanna make sure it's straight and not going either way. And then it's flat on the tube. It's fine and that it's still 73.5, which it is. This way. And a few times. Trim. I'm just gonna roughly scrape on it enough so that it's thin enough to clip the tip open. 
and I rip it open. Put in the plaque to separate the blades. Put in the knife at a little bit of an angle. Slowly making the tip thinner and thinner as you go to the very end of the reed. basically. Right now I'm scraping at an angle because that's the shape I want to create. Also, so we have the three basic parts of the reed. Uh, the windows, the heart, and the tip. The part between the heart and the tip is called the blend and have the spine and the rails. The edges is almost as thin as it is on this. It's just simply filling up the inside of the reed with plaque, and it makes it so much easier to work on your tip. Everything you do has a, an effect, and we're looking for a reed that is can do anything and is therefore in the middle, um, making sure the tip itself is super thin. The corners make a better responsive reed and a darker sounding reed, so it's not bright and tinny sounding. But it's quite heavy. But now I'm just rebalancing, because when you clip the reed, it makes it harder or more difficult to play. Okay. Between a B and a C, and we want it to be a C. In order to bring the pitch up, we're gonna clip the tip. And the tip's pretty long, so I'm gonna tip clip. It's a little over 70, which is just fine. So the things I'm looking for when I'm adjusting reeds are response, which is how easily the reed actually plays when you try to start playing it, intonation, stability. Stability is that it doesn't um, bend pitch too easily. adjust the reed so that the response is a little better and it's a little lighter but I don't want to change too much I don't want to change the pitch so I'm just taking a tiny little bit off the very corners of the tip and the tip and and therefore make it um, a little easier to control Hopefully if I leave it and it hardens a hair, it will be exactly where I want it. 